two, one, right. and we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lanner Bolt's weekly small business success hour. And in a moment, I'm going to bring on a guest uh, who needs no introduction. Uh, we've had him on uh, in the past, and uh, he is going to talk about how um, he has achieved success in his business um, and also leveraged uh, his brick and mortar business and other investments and become very successful. Uh, I have one commercial announcement this month and that's we have upgraded the software. Uh, we've upgraded Landerbolt to uh, handle mobile pages and that's something you're really going to want to use. So uh, go ahead and if you want to do, try that. Um, you can now try mobile pages and uh, the new feature. So this week's success hour, I'm going to bring on um, Ben Rucker. And I'm going to let Ben uh, give you the encapsulation of who he is, um, what he does, um, his humble beginnings, his background, where he started. And, uh, and then we're just going to... Um, uh, see if uh, we'll, we'll get some golden gems from him uh, and uh, and some of those will help you in your business and I know I'm I'm it's very hard to get him on an interview and a call so I'm I'm very uh, grateful for his time because I can barely ever get him to do a call with me because he's uh, he lives what I, what I he lives a success freedom lifestyle and spends a lot of time with his family which he loves and uh, has the time money disconnect so he doesn't have to be slaving away all day at a computer. Uh, instead, he uh, has the type of business that uh, gives him a lifestyle that everyone I'm sure listening would love. And um, if you have it, you love it. If you don't have it, we're gonna get some uh, tips from Ben. So I'm gonna bring on Ben Rocker right now. Ben. Could you talk to the folks and just uh, start with your humble beginnings uh, and give an encapsulation of uh, where you came from, what you do in your business, and how? Um, and 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 then we'll go into some more questions. I actually, Jordan, I started out uh, in college with a, and I was working towards a bachelor's in accounting. I worked as a tutor in the accounting lab most of my most of my college life, and I was planning on graduating and being the typical nerd accountant that I am. But I went to I just was bored, had some extra time. There was a career fair on campus. I went through there, and the IRS actually had a had a booth set up there, and they started talking to me. Somehow the lady convinced me to give her my resume and that they'd really want to, to hire me. So I gave that to her. And in the meantime, a company called Omniture, who was recently purchased by Adobe, they were looking for a team of accountants. They hired me and they were going public. And so they had the team of us go through their accounting system they had they merged softwares before they went public and there was errors so we had to go through identify the errors and fix their manually fix their accounting system so i forgot about the irs and that whole thing well two months into that job irs called me with a job offer so i worked for the irs for seven and a half years i was a revenue agent for them i was also uh, trained tax trial expert witness. I worked with closely with the criminal uh, division of the IRS and also with the, the attorneys there, the United States attorneys. I trained new hires. I did quite a bit there. I got really heavy into real estate, started investing. I eventually quit the IRS. I started my own tax firm. And uh, Jordan, you, you, I think you're asking how I, how I became successful and what I, what I do. The first thing that I do, obviously, is I'm big into real estate. It's passive income. It's good. Uh, passive income 
it are basically investments where you're not doing the work. It's it's earning the money for you. So I I've done pretty well with real estate. Also, my tax firm we represent a lot of people that are that are having IRS problems or being audited or they're simply paying more taxes than they're legally obligated to pay. I personally have grown my business quite a bit as well as my net worth by legally minimizing my tax bill as low as possible. If you're overpaying on taxes, you're paying, I mean if you if you consider the the money that you're out because you can't invest it and you do all these things it it makes quite a big bit of difference on average we're able to save be anywhere between 10 to 20 percent at minimum for our clients that come to us and this is legally through um, maybe different tax structures that you're not considering or deductions that are being missed or things like that ben why don't i interrupt you right there one thing you just mentioned is um saving people money and being in service to others. And uh, I'm partial because I'm a client of yours, but I think you have legendary customer service. Um, and part of that is because uh, I, from what I see, no one can run their business better than themselves. Um, but you can be a business owner like you are and have time freedom. Um, so uh, one other thing I love is you use the referral system. Um, and I, I think that the referral system that you have um, is an excellent way for you to get the clients you want and not the clients you don't want. Um, and uh, could you kind of talk about your referral system? Because I think with any business, a referral system is absolutely necessary. And if you don't have one, you're losing money. Would you mind sharing? Um, your referral system and maybe a, a, a secret about it um, because I know that uh, I would like to know more about it because it could help me. So um, my biggest referral system is I linked up with an attorney who is really well known. Uh, if you Google him, his name is Lee Phillips. He's uh, one of the top asset protections in the country. He has books that he publishes. He has seminars that he teaches. So I started teaching with him and and it's been a gold mine for me because he attracts very successful clients and people that are business oriented and like minded that want to work. So I think the biggest thing, Jordan, is linking up with somebody who who can match your industry that you can both synergize off of. And for example, he teaches those boot camps four times a year in Salt Lake City. I actually teach those with him now, and it helps him because, uh, for example, our last boot camp, half the people that came, they wanted to hear me and hear what I was speaking about as far as uh, saving on taxes. Another half came from him. So I've been able to bring more people to his boot camp. And at the same time, I've been able to use his, he's got the, the expertise and the knowledge and the systems in place to set up those boot camps and fill those seats. So I benefit as well. And so I think the biggest thing when it comes to marketing is, is linking with the right people, the, the people that can help your business. So you know that realtors and lenders, they always get together because they can both help each other's business grow. And I think that's the biggest thing is find a market that you want to niche in and link the people that can send you leads. I love what you just said about uh, hooking up with a lawyer um, because that is someone who typically has a client that can uh, that needs your service as well um, and that's kind of not really I mean it doesn't logically if you want to get the referral system you're thinking about going and getting other tax referrals from other tax you know people but I think that's really thinking out of the box and that's one thing I love about your business other thing I love about your business is every month I get a newsletter in the mail and uh, a lot of us internet marketers I don't think any that I know do a physical newsletter but if I, if I don't get one I get mad because I'm like man where's my reading material while I'm on the toilet <laughs> It's and, true. Uh, even if you don't, even if you don't read it, though, don't you think, Jordan? Like it just feels—it's just getting that in your hands. You feel like you're getting something. 
the same time, when I get it, it reminds me that I'm I'm paying for an awesome product and service. And would you mind um, giving a secret to how the newsletter is obviously uh, pay pay itself like has an incredible return on investment in your business? Can you share and talk about who taught you how uh, the importance of the newsletter and how you uh, do the newsletter? Um, so some of us can start doing our own newsletters. So no one taught me. I just know. So there's a company out there. It's called the Kiplinger. Um, and they make like tax newsletters or investment newsletters, things like that. Right. And there's another guy. Um, it, it's Bradford Tax Institute, I think is what it's called. So the Bradford Tax Institute, you pay a monthly fee and you can have, you get emails and you can go online and look at tax articles and stuff like that. So I was paying a monthly fee for that. And the Kiplinger tax letter, they actually would mail me out a physical copy every month. To be honest, Jordan, I, I spent so much time reading court cases and, and different, the tax code and regulations. I don't, a lot of times I don't get to reading those letters. Um, but I canceled the Bradford Tax Institute. That's where you go online and read those. But I kept the Kiplinger tax letter just because, um, I don't know, I just felt like there was value there. And it was more of like, hey, what if I do want to read it one time? I don't want to cancel that. So I don't really know how to explain it. But psychologically, it had more value to me to get the newsletter in the mail. And to be honest, if you really sat down and compared the two, the one I canceled is probably uh, has a lot more uh, valuable information in it. But so anyways, because I was getting that letter, that's what made me think, wow, I should do this for my clients. So I'm always looking at like thinking about myself and other businesses. Hey, what is it that I that I like doing? Uh, why do I like doing business with this person? And also, why do I not like doing business with this person? And I try and implement the goods of all those things. I, I love that you actually figured that out on your own because the first thing uh, in business is to have it. Actually, what I'm doing right now, every Monday, a live or a, a virtual sit down with a successful business owner um, because a business is a business is a business. And whether you own a pizzeria or you sell homemade jewelry, um, a, the a newsletter is uh, going to be effective and help your business grow. Let me. Uh, another thing that um, I, I was hoping you could share um, is how you balance your family life, which you have a beautiful, incredible family, um, and your business at the same time. Because what I've noticed from being around you and being your client and friend is that you you have a very very good balance between family and your business so could you share with us some some uh some secrets on how to do that so jordan i appreciate the compliments um so i've always been a really hard worker and it's in life, I've always been told, wow, Ben, you're a hard worker. That's so awesome. And everyone thinks that, wow, if you're a hard worker, you're, it's, it's noble. It's a noble thing to do if you're always working, right? And one day my dad told me, he said, you know, Ben, it's really easy to get addicted to working. You can work. You, you can, it's very easy to work 15 hours a day and totally abandon your family. And and I agree with him and I saw myself going down that path, but I always thought it was a noble thing to be a really hard worker and always working as hard as I could to provide for my family. But really my family wants me with them, right? So the, that's the first thing I realized is, hey, it's not always a noble thing to be working 24 seven, enjoy life. And then also the second thing that I did was I decided, you know what, on weekends, I'm not going to, I'm not answering my phone. I'm not going to, I'm not working. I'm going to spend the time with my family. So if I get a text message from a client or something really urgent, which usually isn't in accounting, um, I'll text back, but I, I don't answer my phone on weekends. And I tried to set that precedence from the very beginning. And I think that's helped me a ton. And then lastly, I'll set 
I'll set a time. So for me, it depends on the time of year. Obviously, at tax season, I work later. But during the week, it's like, hey, when 5.30 hits, I'm done. I'm going home. That, though, that's some great. Can do, and then, that's uh, some and great I knowledge. suffer sometimes. I do suffer. I mean, Jordan, truthfully, I can make I can make five million dollars in a year if I wanted to work eighty hundred hours a week. But there's a point where it's like, you know, I can't take on ten thousand clients. I've got to I've got to be content with hundred, two hundred, three hundred, whatever your number is. Figure that out. Figure out what you need to le- what you need to live on, what you want to make, and then you can balance that between your family. I'm also a numbers guy too, Jordan. I have, you know, my brothers, I have some very successful brothers, but they work a lot. And when you look at that extra output of work versus the the benefit that you're getting, it diminishes because your tax, your taxes go up and your time goes away. So what good is millions of dollars if you have no time, right? So can you talk a little bit more about time? Because, uh, I mean, I, in, in, I've been taught that the three most important people in your life is your pastor, your attorney, and your accountant. And before I found you, I could never, at tax season, when it, it was due, the, the stress alone, Ben, uh, would affect my business, my family life, my relationships, my health. Um, stress can have a, actually, stress can actually you know, really, ha- it can cause cancer. It, it has uh, physical body effects. And knowing that I have someone who has um, specialized knowledge, and another thing, if you could talk about this, um, is you are always investing in your education and you're always uh, very current and on the cutting edge of the new tax laws and codes. So, uh, I, when I try to get a hold of you, a lot of times you're getting new certifications or taking new tests, and um, that's something. Uh, could you talk about that and, and and how that's helped you become successful? Well, I think um, I'm kind of forced to always be the cutting edge because I'm not your typical accountant where I take your numbers that you're in and I just plug them in the software and hit enter and see what the software kicks out, right? I well, it started with me working at the IRS. I was always um, going against attorneys, big shot accountant firms. It was me as a single guy sometimes going against four or five attorneys and CPAs. So I learned very quickly that, hey, I've got to get the upper hand on this. And now that I've left the IRS, I'm on the other side of the table. You know, I take, I've taken some really big cases against the IRS and I've won those cases and it's because I have an edge. I read the tax law. I read the court cases that come out. I always try and stay super, super current on taxes so that I'm able to negotiate those those fights and deal with them a lot better. But also I, I'm able to make sure that my clients are taking full advantage of all the tax laws. And they're always changing. I mean this new the new Trump tax Cuts and Jobs Act. There's huge opportunities for tax savings with that. That I can't even tell you how many CPAs I've talked to or taxpayers at our seminars that know nothing about half the stuff I talk about regarding that. And it's huge. It's not. It's a lot more than the crumbs that Nancy Pelosi talks about. It's it's big numbers, and it's not just for the rich guys. It's actually for the middle class. So, so how much of your business? Um, is you helping other accountants who aren't successful and do you do um, uh, consulting and help their businesses? Uh, is that a part of your business? So we have a lot of, um, and that was another, that's another niche that we've just realized. And, you know, I told you how I linked up with a, an attorney. We've been having a lot of local CPAs and accountants that have clients that get into IRS problems that have been referring their clients to us and we and we deal with those IRS problems. Believe it or not, Jordan, it's actually kind of funny. I there's a tax there's a local tax attorney that's one of the big biggest tax attorneys in Utah. He contracts out the complicated cases to us. He 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 literally sends the whole case file and says, hey, do all the work and then tell me what I need to do. So it's finding those those different people that can help you out. Did I, I don't think I answered your question. What, 
Uh, what was your I, question? I forgot because I'm 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 really uh, I have so many things I want to ask you, and I know we have we have limited <laughs> amount of time. So why don't we get to this? And this. Oh is, yeah, you were asking me about like what I like my my like keeping up with technology and all that, you know. So, you know, I've always been taught though and raised: if you're gonna do something, be the best at whatever industry you're in. Be number one, and so I have to do that if I want to be the best. I love what you said about that. And another thing I really wanted to ask you is when you quit your job, that first jump to starting a business, how scary was that? And what, um, what motivated you to do that? To just to understand that I don't want to trade my dollars for hours. And can, um, can you take us back, uh, years ago when you quit your job and and kind of uh, help others who want to do that and want to start their business but they're too scared of what if the business doesn't work what if i don't like, get any clients what uh could you talk about when you made the jump to uh to your being a yeah business? sure so jordan you're gonna laugh but the first thing i you know when i when i really jumped i thought okay What's the worst possible thing that can happen if I totally fail in my new business? You know, maybe I live in a trailer park or maybe I have to move in with a friend or my parents. Keep in mind at this time I have, I, I, and I still do have a wife, but at the time I had uh, two young kids and I was living in a town home. And I thought, you know what? I don't care. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? is I, I lose my house, big deal. I mean, some people don't feel that way because they're very attached to their things, but I, I mean, I wasn't, and, and obviously it was a townhome, but I'm not, I, I don't get attached to things. To me, I'm more of, this is a, I enjoy the challenge of starting a business. And to me, that's life. So going out on that challenge and going into the unknown, with knowing that you could fail, you knew that, but you did it anyway. Yeah, but I also have, right, but I also had backup plans. And it was like, you know, I thought, okay, if I fail, what, what, what else can I do if this doesn't work? Oh, I could go, I can go get a job at Costco and I can make that work until I can work out another gig. You know what I mean? I always think about, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen if I fail? And if I do fail, what's my backup plan? <laughs> You and I love that. Up. Good. I love that strategy because when you fail, you, I mean, you, you fail big and we only get one chance of this life, right? So why not take the biggest swing you can take? And actually you, you don't even, well, you mostly don't even fail anymore. A lot of everything you do is successful. Um, but the real, the real reason that I look up to you and um and uh really respect you as a business owner is that you you actually um almost have you actually do not use the internet to market your business so i it, it so i can't even imagine what would happen if you put it if you implemented a sales and marketing strategy for the internet however you are the the you are the cpas of internet marketers and affiliates and you are one i'm sorry cpa you're you're the you're the best accountant i've ever found never had for internet for internet businesses however you don't market on the internet but you are extremely successful without using internet marketing um and uh many people think that they have to use internet marketing uh to market their business but you don't and you still your marketing is incredible um, so, uh, could you talk about how, uh, your marketing strategy, uh, evolved and maybe share like two or three things that the, uh, the, the listeners can use offline, um, to market their business instead of, instead of constantly talking about online internet strategies, maybe two or three tips on offline marketing. So I think. The first thing, Jordan, is I've tried to build a reputation um, with other tax professionals, the public, and also 
um, a reputation with the IRS that number one, I have integrity. Two, I'm honest. And three, I'll I'll work for you like you're a family member of mine. And I think you can attest to that. Like every single one of my clients that I take on, I treat them like they're my family. And if the, anyone's audited, they come to me, I defend them like they're my family. And that helps me. That's helped me grow off the internet because word of mouth and reputation means a lot, right? I think the most important thing, if the, if you get anything out of this interview, what Ben said is he gives more than 100% and over delivers. And that reputation is what keeps people coming back, keeps people, he, he retains clients from day one for years. And that, that he over delivers and treats his clients um, uh, not as simply uh, a, a buyer unit or a customer, uh, but on a more intimate level. So that, uh, that, type, of, uh, that type of reputation, I think is one of the most important things that you you said right there, um, and uh, Jordan, you want me to? Do you want to know what I I want to say one last thing? So at the IRS, I probably audited uh, over a thousand, thousands. I would say thousands of businesses, individuals, corporations, partnerships. I've seen it all. I've seen I've audited everyone from a bill enforcement agent to a CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation, right? And one thing that I've seen, the biggest thing I can pinpoint to the successful businesses and the non-successful businesses, besides work ethic and all that, is really having good accounting. So knowing where your numbers are, knowing where you're, where you're overspending, where you're, over, where you're underspending, where you're getting a return on your money. That's number one, right? And there were so many businesses I looked at and I thought, wow, if they knew where their numbers were and if they had good accounting, these guys would make three times as much money and they'd pay a lot less in taxes. So number one, get good accounting records. Uh, get to the point where you, you can pull up a financial statement each month and say, okay, here's where we were last month. Here's, and then you can make financial goals from that. Don't use your financial records to do a tax return. That should be your secondary reason for having good financial records. Your your primary reason should be to make business decisions. Amazon, Walmart, Target, those guys aren't using their financials for their tax returns. They're analyzing those every month daily to make business decisions. So keep that track. Number two, find a good account, someone that knows the tax law, somebody that's not going to cause you tax problems that can legally save you. And I think if you do those two things and work hard and do the other strategies that you coach on, I don't see how you can fail. I really don't. You made a really good point there um, about burying your head in the sand and not looking at your monthly numbers because I've done that. I did that for years and it's easy, right? Um, but, yeah. when, but when I get a balance sheet, a P over L, a detailed P over L, and I go through it with a highlighter, I, it's, it changes your business forever. Um, and because that's what successful people do. They cut the red and they scale the green. And it's, it's so easy to see, to go over that detailed P and L and, and, and just cut out that stuff that you're, that you're always spending on or you're not using. And it can be thousands, even tens of thousands per month. And one thing, I, a quote that I love, story that I love, Ben, is Lee Iacocca, uh, Ford Motor Company is only, I tell us all the time, Ford Motor Company, Ben, only motor company, the car company that has not gone bankrupt ever. And the reason is they brought back the Mustang in the 70s and 80s. And Lee Iacocca was the CEO of Ford Motor Company, he's the most successful, wealthiest man in the world. And there's a story about him going to a department store and using a 2% off coupon when he could have bought the whole department store mm -hmm. himself. And you gave me some advice and uh, recently, and maybe we'll end right here. And then um, 
uh, and then I uh, I want to give people the opportunity to um, to uh, contact you because right now is the time where you're stressing out. I know a lot of you have stress about okay, do I go down a TurboTax? Who do I call? What do I do? I'm so confused. And 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 when you can pay an expert, all that stuff's taken care of. <clears throat> um, and you're I consider you the best, the best accountant in uh, in the internet marketing realm, um, and you understand it really well. Uh, the traditional accountant, yeah. they don't understand the internet, um, and you understand the internet and and how uh, digital marketers, how we do business, because we get bank wires, uh, we get paid from banks in. Uh, from affiliate networks, we get paid from affiliate networks, weird banks all over the world, and um, and you're able to 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 help um, digital marketers, and that's uh, pretty much everyone listening uh, has an internet business. So um, why don't we end with um, how how um, how they can contact you uh, and get on your newsletter and get get that information from you um, and. Uh, what they should be doing right now to meet that deadline. Um, uh, if, if um, uh, I don't know what the deadline is because you already filed mine and, all, and literally all I had to do is sign a paper. I, all I had to do was sign a sheet for, and that, that. I mean, that is incredible that uh, you took care of everything. You sent me one page, I signed it and you filed it and it was done. So what, uh, um, and number one, how do they contact you to to um, to get involved with you? Um, and number two, uh, if they if they haven't done anything right now for their taxes, what should they be doing right now to get ready for that deadline? Um, right now, they should be gathering their financial statements and gathering their tax records and giving them giving them to their accountant. Unfortunately, right now is not the time to tax plan for last year, right? Right now is the tax plan for this year. And so get get that done as quickly as possible. Uh, Jordan, you mentioned how can people reach me? I think if you go to my website, irstaxrelief.com, you can see a picture of me. You can read about me. My contact information is on there. Uh, one thing we started doing recently with the clients that we've been taking on is we've guaranteed them that we will we will legally save them as much in taxes as they as they um, pay us. So, for example, if you pay us two thousand dollars to do your taxes and we're and we're not able to legally save you that much in tax savings, we'll refund the difference. Now, obviously, if we save you a lot of money, we're not going to charge you more. We don't charge based on on what the tax bill is that's actually illegal but we do guarantee that you're going to get the services you want uh, the only time we haven't been able to do that we've had a couple of guys come to us and their taxes have been done completely wrong and they've been illegally underpaying uh, obviously that guarantee would not apply to you but we make sure that when we take on clients they're going to get their their money's worth out of us if we don't feel like we can save them or that the costs are going to outweigh the benefits, we'll tell them, hey, you're better off just doing the taxes on your own. Go to a local uh, tax firm. So uh, if your tax bill is not over $10,000 already or $20,000, do not don't call us because there's probably not a lot we can do for you. But if you, if you have a high tax bill, if your income is two fifty dollars or higher, give us a call. I just – you just shared a gem – I, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that marketing immediately because that I cannot believe how smart that is. We you it's it's risk free because if you don't save them, uh, that's essentially uh, a free service. Because if you don't save them that money in taxes, you'll refund them, and that is inc that's an incredible guarantee. So they there's well, so it's there's, a win. It's a it's a win win too though because we want people to be happy, right? And so if they're not happy, uh, we want to refund them the money. We don't want them to be stuck with us. And at the same time, it's to assure you, Jordan, that, hey, if we take you on, we're confident that we can, that you're going to benefit from our services.
Well, Ben, you have, I'm, uh, th from this interview, I've learned so much. And the last thing that you mentioned, that sales and marketing strategy, I'm gonna do that right away in my business. I'm gonna get, I, cause I'm gonna call my partner right now. Um, and and we're gonna implement that because that that is brilliant. I don't know how you came up with that. You maybe paid for it, learn it somewhere, but whatever you did, that that marketing strategy is incredible. If we don't save you this amount that you're paying us, we'll refund you that difference. That's that's an, uh, that is incredible marketing. Uh, so thank you for the time today, and I'll put a link in this uh, video below that'll go to your website and. Uh, when they go to your website, would you rather have um, them email you? And again, again, if you do not make two to two fifty a year, don't contact Ben, okay? Because he works with um, success. He works with people who clients who he wants to work with, and those are people who are uh, have <clears throat> revenues of two hundred two fifty a year. So do not contact him if. He will he will turn you away, and that's something I also love about him. So Ben, uh, the, I'm going to put a link below this video. Um, when they go to your website, should they email you or call you? Or call yeah, they can they can email me or call me. It's hard. I mean, I'm a little bit harder to reach right now because it's tax season, so I'm in and out of appointments. If you call me, uh, uh, if I don't answer, leave a message or send me an email, and I'll call you back. But there's a form on my website you can just put on there or just email me, uh, and then we'll take it from there. I usually start out, Jordan, by uh, I'll review the prior year tax returns. If your income's above there, I'll review your tax returns at no charge, and then let's see what I can do to save you. I love it. Brilliant. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate your time. Right. And uh, again, if you yeah. click on the link below, um, Contact Ben. If you uh, don't want to contact Ben, click on the link below anyways uh, to check out his website. Um, so either way, click on the link below because he does have some really cool marketing um, uh, things on his website, including testimonials. And testimonials are very effective. So either way, click on the link, go to his site. And um, if you are uh, if you are have any stress about taxes and you do meet his requirements, because he's not going to take on clients who uh, are under that, and he may actually turn you away even if you're over that amount, um, because as he gets closer to tax season, uh, I know from my experience he starts turning people away. So the time is now. The time is right now to get um, to get him on your side and get him in your corner. Uh, ben, I appreciate the time. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, that's it. Thanks, Jordan, for having me on. All right. Thank you, and appreciate the time. And uh, maybe we'll bring you on uh, again um, because uh, people will probably write in to us with questions, and uh, we can bring you on one more time in the future. And yeah. uh, I appreciate it. Maybe we uh, could do that, Jordan. If we get up to like a certain amount of questions, you know, let's get on a live live chat and let's go through those questions live that'd be awesome yeah okay let's do it all right um ben i'll i'll send you a link to this video on youtube as well so you can share it with um your clients because i know a lot of your clients could take some because they have businesses could take some business success from you uh these tips and and the the one thing I learned, uh, I learned an incredible tip from you. So I, uh, we're gonna end this right now. I have a meeting in one minute and you are, your time is very valuable to you. Again, thank you. And this ends Lanterbolt Success Hour for the week. Have an awesome week, folks. And I'll talk to you later, Ben. Okay, thank you. See ya. All right, bye.